Hi, in this lecture video, I will be discussing solution stoic geometry. So there are two learning objectives for this lecture video. First is for you to recognize the differences and the similarity between solution stoic geometry and solution dilutions. And the second is for us to learn how to apply stoic geometry to now a solution. So first, let's now go over solution stoic geometry. Whenever we do chemical reaction, that and we take one reactant and react it with another reactant and by combining them together, then essentially we have a chemical reaction that happening. And if we ever ask you to figure out how much product would, there would be, be formed, then based on this context right here of calculating how much product that can be formed from certain amount of reactant, this is stoic geometry. And now, realistically speaking, whenever we perform chemical reaction, a lot of time we actually do not start out with the mass of a reactant because um, it, we do not start with the solid reactant. But instead, we start with the reactant that been made into a solution already. So essentially, we'll be taking a solution containing the reactant one and combining that with the solution containing the reactant two, and now they are reacting together. And now how much product would be calculated, would be produced, then all of this is known as the solution stoichiometry. So it calculation applied to now solution. And this is different compared to solution dilution. Solution dilution involve added more solvent to a particular solution to make that solution become more diluted. And that is when we'll be using M1V1 and M2V2 to solve those kind of problems. Now, in solution stoichiometry, a lot of times still mix them together and because they see that we still combine two solutions together, right? And you are right in that context right there. So when we combine two solutions together to do a chemical reaction, it's true that the solution, the concentration of those two solutions will become diluted. And But then we do not need to calculate what would be the final concentration of these two diluted solutions right here because it is the amount of mole from those solutions that matter. And we do not have to be concerned of what how that concentration will be changed and now what will be the new concentration when we combine two solutions together. Okay, and again, it is the amount more of those two solutions that we care about in doing solution stoichiometry. And with that being said, please never use M1V1 and M2V2 in solution stoichiometry. So you involve adding two solutions together to do a chemical reaction. This is solution stoichiometry, and therefore do not use M1V1 equal to M2V2. And this is a very, very common mistake in on this topic. And now, so now let's go over how would we do solution stoichiometry. So this section right here in black is a section of what we have seen already on how to do stoichiometry. So if we were to have a reactant, and now we would have gram of reactant, and if we were to figure out how much product would be produced from this certain amount of reactant right here, then we have to figure out what is the limiting reactant. And from the mass of the limiting reactant, we use it molar mass to convert this into mole. And once we have more of the reactant already, we now go to the balance equation. So that's the difference right there. We now have to rely on the balance equation in solution stoichiometry to now figure out how many more of the product would be produced. And from there, we can now convert this into gram of product. Or if we were to know what is the molar of the product, we can also figure out how much volume of the product would be produced as well. And so the part in black is what we have seen already. But now realistically speaking, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of time we do not start out with gram of the reactant. But we then we have dissolved this reactant into a solution first before we do chemical reaction. So technically speaking, we will be starting from volume of the reactant. And it's important that we know what is the molarity of this reactant right here. And because whenever we make a solution, again, it's important that we know its concentration. And here in this case, it's important that we know the concentration of this reactant right here in terms of its molarity. If we were to start with volume of this reactant, 
and we know its molarity, we'll be able to figure out how many more of it that we have. And now we can figure out how many more of the product that we will have, and then we can start convert that into the gram of the product, or molecule of the product, or volume of the product, if we were to have the molarity of the product. So it is simply just adding on an extra step that we have not seen uh, before involving the molarity. And the minute that you recognize that this is a solution stoic chemistry, because it involves two things reacting together, the first thing that we're supposed to do is now write the balanced chemical equation. So we, that will be the chemical equation that we need to go to, not M1V1 equal to M2V2. So again, it's important that you understand and you see the differences between solution stoichiometry versus solution dilution. So that way you're not confused whether you use M1V1 equal to M2V2 or the balanced equation. If it is solution stoichiometry, make sure we start with the balanced chemical equation. And now let's try a few examples right here. So in this case right here, how many milliliter or how many liter of this 0.125 mole of sodium hydroxide solution do we need to completely neutralize or react with 0.225 liter or 0.75 mole of sulfitic acid solution? So we have two solutions, a solution of sodium hydroxide and a solution containing sulfitic acid reacting together and now it asking how much of one reactant do we need to react with the other reactant so we can see in this case right here we there are two things that reacting together so there is a chemical equation or a chemical reaction happening so therefore we have to start with the balanced equation first and now let's write a balanced chemical equation so in this case we have sodium hydroxide solution and it therefore it is an aqueous reacting with sulfitic acid and sulfitic acid is H2SO4 aqueous solution and when we combine these two solutions together right here so this is an acid or base reaction or the other term that we have heard, have learned for this would be the double replacement reaction in which the drug in force is the formation of water right and so in this case right here, the product would then be as follows. Sodium would now be binding to the sulfate to form sodium sulfate in the chemical formula is Na2SO4. And this is soluble in water, so it remains an aqueous. And now hydrogen would be binding with hydroxide to form water. And water is a liquid at room temperature. So that is the chemical equation right here. And now the next step that we have to make sure is this chemical equation to be balanced and right now it does not seem to be balanced to balance this we need two of the sodium hydroxide and two of the water so now it is balanced and the question now is as follow how much of this sodium hydroxide solution right here do we need to completely react with the sulfitic acid solution so um so at this point right here here will be some practical advice for you guys so we can see that there's a lot of information that is being given, right? And sometimes it's quite confusing on which information belongs to which solution. So therefore, it's important that we now list them where they belong by doing the following. Here in this case right here, we know that this concentration right here and this volume right here are for the sulfitic acid. So therefore, we go to the balanced chemical equation and under sulfitic acid, we list those information. So the volume of the sulfuric acid is 0.225 liter and the concentration is 0.75 molar. So that is the concentration and the volume of the sulfuric acid solution. And now the other information we've been told that the, is the concentration of the sodium hydroxide. So here in this case right here, it is 0.125 molar. And now the question asks us, how many liter of this solution do we need? So liter of NaOH solution, that is what being asked for. So you can see, this is the reason why the student are very, uh, a lot of students are confused and they end up using M1V1 A equal to M2V2 uh, in, in this case right here. Because they see, oh, I have L, I have V, I have L, I have V. And therefore, they think, oh, and this is M1V1 and M2V2. But please remember that this is not. This is not a dilution problem.
but this is solution stoichiometry. So now let's go over how we would solve this for this kind of problem right here. So here in this case, we have to start out with this known solution. We know both the volume and the concentration of this sulfitic acid solution. So we can think of this as the known, the reactant with the known information. Now, essentially, we asking how much volume of this sodium hydroxide right here do we need, right? And this would be the solution map. If I were to start in with your known, if we were to know the volume and the molarity of this sulfitic acid solution, essentially, we'll be able to figure out how many more of sulfitic acid that we have. And now for every one more of sulfitic acid that we have, it will be reacting with two more of sodium hydroxide. So that's how we can convert this into more of sodium hydroxide. And once we have more of sodium hydroxide ready, if we were to know its molarity, we'll be able to use it to convert this into volume of this sodium hydroxide solution. So that would then be the solution map right here. So the solution map is as follows. Start with the volume of the known solution. So that would be the starting point. Okay, so starting. Start with the volume of the known reactant. Or known or given reactant. And solve the problem from there. So here in this case, this would be the solution map. Starting with volume from a uh, liter of the sulfuric acid solution. And we know its concentration, so therefore we can apply its molarity to be able to figure out how many more of the sulfuric acid that we have. And once we have more of sulfuric acid that we have already, here in this case it's asking us how many more of the reactant that we have. So we can use the mole to mole ratio between the sulfuric acid and the sodium hydroxide. And this is one to two mole ratio right here to now pick out the mole of the sodium hydroxide that will be needed. And once we have more of the sodium hydroxide you need already, if we were to know its concentration or its molarity, we can now pick out the volume of this sodium hydroxide that will be needed. And that's how we will solve this problem right here. And as you can see, it do not involve M1V1 equal to M2V2. So please be aware of it. And now let's solve this. So we're starting with 0 0.2, 25 liter of sulfuric acid. And now the concentration of the sulfuric acid is 0.175 molar. Make sure we know how to use this information right here as the conversion factor. So what this means as follows, for every one liter of the sulfuric acid solution, it would have 0.175 molar of sulfuric acid in it. So that's how we can convert the molarity into the conversion factor. And now for AVE, one more of sulfuric acid. We will need two more of sodium hydroxide to completely react with it. And that's how we can convert into more of sodium hydroxide. And now we know the concentration of sodium hydroxide so therefore, we'll be able to apply that to now solve for, for the volume of sodium hydroxide. So in this case, the concentration of sodium hydroxide is 0.125 uh, molar. So this means as follows, 0.125 moles of sodium hydroxide. And make sure this term go on the denominator so it can get cancelled out. And on top, 1 liter of this sodium hydroxide solution. And that is how we will be able to set this up. And now let's see the unit cancellation. Those, those two units get canceled out. So more of sulfuric acid cancel with more of sulfuric acid. Lead of sulfuric acid cancel with liter of sulfuric acid. So in the end, we have left a uh, liter of sodium hydroxide. And that what this question is asking for. So here in this case, we become 0 0.630 liter of sodium hydroxide that how much sodium hydroxide that we need of this concentration and here 0.125 molar in order to react with this volume and this concentration of the sulfuric acid. So this is an example involving a reactant to reactant relationship. If I would have one solution of this concentration 
how much volume of the other solution would I need. So this is an example of a reactant to reactant relationship. And now let's try another example right here. How many grams of lead 2 iodine would be produced when excess potassium iodine solution is added to 50 milliliter of a 0 0.1, 0 0.811 molar lead 2 nitrate solution? So again, after we read through this problem right here, we can see that this uh, there is a chemical reaction that is happening here in this case, right? So therefore, this is a solution stoichiometry, not a solution dilution problem. And so therefore, the first thing that we should be able to write will then be the balance equation. And now let's do that. So first, let two iodine, that is one of the solution. And uh, oh, actually, uh, the first let two nitrate, so this is the product right here. So we have potassium iodine, that is one of the solution. And in this case right here, we've been told that this is the excess reactant. And now the other reactant that we have is lead 2 nitrate. And so lead 2 nitrate is one of the reactant. And the chemical formula is PbNO3 2. And this is a aqueous solution. It combined with uh, potassium iodine, which is Ki aqueous, to produce the product. So here in this case right here, this is a double replacement reaction. So the product would be PbI2. And this is a solid. And the other product we have would be KNO3. And this is an aqueous. So this is the uh, conventional equation right here. And again, make sure that it is correctly balanced. Balance in chemical equation is really important in doing solution stoichiometry. Okay. So now it is correctly balanced. And now let's provide in some information. So we've been told that the concentration of the lead 2 nitrate is 0.811 molar and that how much volume of it that we have so here in this case right here we have 50.0 milliliter of the lead 2 nitrate solution so go to the lead 2 nitrate and put this volume under it and now a concentration is 0.811 molar so put this information under the lead 2 nitrate as well and now we've been told this is the excess reactant so that basically means that this would then be our limiting reactant. And now the question asks us how many grams of this product right here would be produced. So if we were to now go back to our solution map of what we have seen before already, we are starting out with volume of the reactant, and we're asking how many grams of the product. And the solution map is as follows, starting with volume of this reactant, in this case the limiting reactant, we have to convert that into mole by using its molarity. And then from after we get more of this limiting reactant, we can now convert this into more of the product and then gram of the product by using its molar mass as the conversion factor. And now let's set this up to solve it. And in this case again, so again, we need to start with volume of the known reactant. So this is the volume of the given reactant. 50.0 milliliter of this lead 2 nitrate solution. And the concentration here is then 0.811 uh, molar. So this means 0.811 mole of lead 2 nitrate over 1 liter of the solution. So here in this case right here, rather than converting from milliliter into liter first, I can be putting a thousand milliliter of the lead 2 nitrate solution here instead of the 1 liter. So again, 1 liter equal to a thousand milliliter. And I want to use the one with the unit milliliter. So that will help me save a step of converting milliliter into liter. And on top, I still have 0.811 more of lead 2 nitrate. And now for AV, one more of lead 2 nitrate. It will be producing one more of lead 2 iodine. And now for every one more of lead to iodine, its molar mass is 461 gram of lead to iodine. And this would then equal to 18.7 
gram of lead to iodine. So that how much product that we can expect to be produced here in this reaction. And please try this example number three because this is very similar to the example number one that we have done already.